Okay, this is taking me far too many takes, far too many tries to do. I think I'm just going to try and go over a few important spots in the shader so that you can actually kind of understand what's going on in this big thing. So the biggest, most important part is this rotate function right here. This is going to take a camera input and it's going to give us an output as if this camera vector was rotated and deformed around by the black hole itself. So the two parts we have for this vector rotate is this axis right here, the axis at which we rotate around and the angle, the amount that we rotate it by. So for the axis, I found just taking a cross product with the normal and the camera vector is able to give us something usable. So just doing the check right here, normal cross the camera vector is gonna give us vector that's pointing into the page, and if we rotate, it's going to give us something clockwise, which is what we want. For the angle, it's this large function right here, which has three smaller functions. I found taking dot product with the vector and the normal as well to work. The first step with this is doing a spherical to linear transformation. This is just because the dot product gives us something that looks like a sphere. And so this just turns the function into something more linear. We have a smoothing function right here. I'll go over that in a second. And then we have this final function right here. I found this function as this purple line right here as a kind of in between between this red line and this green line, which I found from Wikipedia and this paper right here. So it's a good in between between both of them. This smoothing function just helps out with a lot of the edges around. If I don't have it, it becomes much more noticeable where the edge of this spherical shader is. And without it, it doesn't look as good. So including it, it becomes a lot harder, nigh on impossible, to actually figure out where the shader starts and the environmental map begins. With both of those, the axis and the angle, you can then get an output for that, use it in the same environmental map that we used for the actual world shader, and then just throw it in to the hodgepodge of all the other shaders that we'll go over in a second. I do have this less than here as well, plugging in with this value right here, back to there. This is the actual black hole itself. You can see I can turn it off right here, and we get what would happen if we didn't see the event horizon, but that doesn't really exist. So just turn off any kind of shader right there. So that right there, this bottom part right here is where a lot of the weird math starts. It will give you just the black hole, but all this other stuff, this accretion disk, the star is all up here. And this starts getting into weird stuff. So if you just want a black hole itself, for some quick simulation or whatever it's just this right here going into your environmental map some shader and then sending it to your output the main eureka moment i had with this entire shader was this vector rotate function right here the idea i had was that we're going to have some camera coming in at some position and we're going to get some output of the camera and what i figured out is that Whatever this output position needs to be, these two angles between the position and the camera vector should be the same in order to maintain some symmetries that the black hole should provide. Meaning that I can do the vector rotate on this position to give us the new position that we need to solve for. So using the position as the vector, using the center of the black hole as the center, and then same cross product axes, same angle amount, I'm able to then have a position and a camera angle for which to do more shader garbage with. So the first thing I was able to do with this information was an accretion disk. This takes a lot of steps, but we'll try and go over it each part. So the main idea is, once we have a position and a camera vector, we can figure out what value z equals 0 is going to be here. 
and then we're just left with some place on the xy plane to where we can check if it's within the accretion disk. This first part right here is doing some stuff to solve that z equals zero, where we have rz plus gamma cz equals zero, where r is the position and c is the camera direction. You can find gamma is equal to negative rz over cz, and then I'm able to do the r vector plus gamma c vector. And that let me lets me find where we are on the xy plane once we're done with this direction. After that I'm doing a couple checks, doing a couple subtractions with the center of the black hole as well. Doing a final comparison. This lets me set the actual distance and size of the accretion disk. After that is just a simple sign. This is just to do some small artifact checking because right here there's some weird issues if it's not involved. This is some weird things where if gamma is positive instead of negative some weird stuff can happen but we can just turn that off. After that we can just send it all to the shader then. So I'm just using a mix shader right here and I'm sending in the end the xy coordinates that we solved for right here to the shader. This is the same I have for the disk right here. So with this, it's meant to show that the xy coordinates are consistent between all of this, meaning if I wanted to, I could grab, say, a noise texture and use it in both the disk shader and this part right here, and it becomes as flawless as the environmental shader. There are a few problems with it, but that's just mostly be due to small bits in this comparison function. I'm sure you could whittle this down just by using smaller and smaller numbers in this part right here. The last bit of math in this is this star function right here. This is meant to be any kind of sphere that you have in your world that you want bent by the black hole. Again, this is using the output vector and instead now it's doing some weird math almost akin to angular momentum, which is where I found this function from, this idea from. In the end, this is just taking the output vector that we solved and comparing it to the r vector, how the direction that we need to look to see the star from where we are. In the end, there's a bunch of weird math as to why this works. It's all a pain, but in the end, it gives us something that we need. There's, an, again, another small correction that we need to do. This is just, again, if we get some weird negative values instead of positive or whatever, we get some stuff where the star ends up reflecting forwards. So that's just added just so that that doesn't happen. For the star size and location, you can see right here, I have star pause and star size. This is directly linked in geometry nodes using stored name attribute and object info to actually get the location and scale of the star in space to let me move it around and have it actually be affected by the vector itself. Because of this, this means all the location and scale information is actually useful, so don't use any of the control A apply to scale apply to location. Just leave it as a sphere of radius 1 and all the math ends up working out. There are some limits to what this shader can do. If anything gets within this major sphere around the black hole itself, stuff starts breaking down. This I can show right here. If we bring the accretion disk too close, you can see there's some issues right here where nothing gets modeled right there. I've been trying to figure this out. I can't really, if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. But because of this, that's why I have to leave this disk so far away and why it might not look as good as, say, you bring it close enough. That might be something more akin to what you might expect to see. But it works well enough. The star as well, if you bring that too close to the star, you get some weird pulling that happens, and then when you get too close, it just full-on disappears. So that's why I recommend, you know, try and keep everything away from 
the black hole shader itself trying to do stuff far away, trying to keep stuff smaller, but overall this is meant to be something that works in Blender Eevee, so it does far more than I ever expected it to. And to just show off one more thing, I just want to show off the render times as well. So in, in the end, this only takes 0.28 seconds, that's basically real time. I've been able to get this shader to run on an Oculus Rift and it runs perfectly fine as well. So there you go. I'd love to see what anybody else can do with this. So I'll have the I'll have this full shader in the comments somewhere just so that you can reverse engineer it and use it to whatever you want it to do.